Hey, it's your old buddy, Pastor Steve. Uh, welcome to Pretend Church. This is the latest sermon. And I, I don't really plan these. I just kind of wing it. And I uh, let the Lord... <laughs> kidding, just kidding. I just say what's on my heart. Uh, I grew up... Uh, around a lot of, uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to take the gloves off. I grew up around a lot of Christianity and, uh, people would say, I, I, uh, I let the Lord tell me what to do. I, I'm going to tell you what the Lord has laid upon my heart. And, uh, I think I understand where people are coming from, but like a lot of that's changed and, uh, you know, in the year 2022 in the United States, we're going through a lot of uh, growth and changes and uh, different kinds of things. And, uh, you know, I still uh, I still hang out with Christians. Pastor Brown's, well, obviously a Christian pastor and he's a spiritual mentor. But he understands that, like, you know, we're not all waiting for, uh, you know, the guy with the beard to come riding on a white horse to rescue us from some science fiction movie uh, Armageddon thing to mark the end of time. But I wanted to get into something today, uh, you know... There's a movement called deconstruction, and I'm kind of part of that movement, and that's like some of what we do here. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that I want this to be a safe space for anybody who feels like they're deconstructing, but there's something that I've noticed. I've noticed two types of deconstruction. I've noticed one kind of person who, like myself, says, wow, I used to be a Christian, but I really think that the whole premise of Christianity, like the whole premise, like not just the premise of Christianity, at least as far as I was raised to understand it. No, no, like the whole premise, like the whole thing. Like, uh, like, I think you, th I think, uh, I think you should throw this whole entire sandwich away. Uh, I don't, I don't want to like scrape off the mayonnaise and eat the pickles. I don't think the cheese is any, like, no, this whole thing, like the whole, all of Christianity, like, no, I'm, I'm good. Like, uh. I'm not even hungry for anything else right now. There's a deconstruction movement that says, you know what? Uh, forget this. I'm walking away from this. I'm, 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 it took me a long time, but I'm part of that. I was questioning. I was questioning years ago, but you know, I uh, I got to unquestioning, and I just got to the point where it's like, no, no, you're not, you're not going to be able to fix this. You're not going to read the Bible. I never did read the whole Bible, but like, you're not going to be able to read the Bible and come up with that special little verse that just magically makes it all make sense. I know people who have read the whole Bible. And they're like, not exactly sure what to tell you the linchpin of the whole Bible is. You know, there ought to be like one verse in there. And it's not John 3.16. There's a whole lot of stuff in there that doesn't make any sense in light of the way most people interpret John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. What does that even mean? You could, like, build a doctoral degree, doctor of philosophy, of divinity around trying to answer that question. So, like, I don't know, man. I'm one of those people who feels like I just need to walk away entirely. Uh, but I'm noticing another crowd in the deconstruction movement. And the other crowd in the deconstruction movement is doing something different. And what they're saying is, like, we're going to take this sandwich that I was talking about. Uh, we think the cheese is bad and we need... We need to get rid of the bread because the mayonnaise on the bread is bad. So we need new bread with new mayonnaise. Uh, the meat is good. The pickles are okay. Like the tomato, I think the tomato's good. Uh, the lettuce is no good. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, but we can save this sandwich. We can save a lot of these ingredients and have a really good sandwich and have a nice meal. Some of the sandwich is rotten, but as sandwiches go, I've seen worse and I've eaten worse. And I'm going to save this sandwich by tossing out the ingredients that would probably give me food poisoning. And I'm going to put new on based on my own experience, understanding, learning, interpretation of the scripture. And I'm going to go from there and I'm going to have this sandwich and I'm still going to be a Christian. That's okay. More power to you if you want to do that. I know people who are doing that. And uh, I'm, I'll protect their identity here. I'll protect everyone's identity here, but like, if if you're one of those deconstructionists who's in the the walk away camp, walking away from Christianity altogether, uh, welcome to my camp. That's my camp, and I'm walking away. I'm learning more about Buddhism. I still, this is what's weird though. I still think Judaism is cool. Like, I'm down with Judaism. Not that I want to convert to it or study it, but just like I've got friends who are Christians, I've got friends who are Jewish. And Taoists and Buddhists, atheists, whatever. Witches, pagans, uh, <laughs> You might have noticed in the comic strip that my girlfriend's a witch now, which is really awesome. And uh, keep keep following Conscience and Nonsense on consandnons.com. And uh, keep following us on social media. Looking forward to good times. But, you know, she really encouraged me. Hannah Lourdes, that's her name, Hannah. She really encouraged me to keep going with this whole thing, with this pretend church uh, concept. But like, you know, she's she's not a Christian, and she's not going to be one, and I'm not, and we have friends who are, but those friends of ours who are. You know, they're not trying to shove their beliefs down our throat, which is very important. Uh, you know, we try so hard sometimes, or at least we have in the past, to separate politics and religion and sports from work and polite company and... Uh, we have to wake up. We have to wake up and admit that we got to be honest about who we are. And if we can't be honest about who we are in polite company, 
well then are we really in polite company if somebody's an atheist and they're scared to tell people if somebody's gay LGBTQIA plus I mean if somebody's in a relationship with a minority somebody who's you know a different race from the people they're hanging out with should they be afraid to say something no they shouldn't we should all get along we should all stick together so like the other part of what I wanted to say basically tonight in uh, this message for Sunday July 17th 2022 is uh, it looks like things are going to get worse before they get better and things could get real bad but I don't think we should ever look at a human being or a group of people and treat them like they're not precious or like they don't count or like they don't matter or like what, I, what I'm getting at is like we should we should not treat people in a messed up way because well there's been enough of that in history and maybe Jewish people got treated that way and black people got treated that way and at certain points in history different groups of white people got treated that way too depending on who they were where they were from and that just needs to stop the solution to bigotry and hate and racism and evil and cruelty and genocide is not more of the same it's not the wrong kind of pushback I want to push back with words and ideas and boycotts and marches I want to push back by voting and writing letters and preaching these sermons I want to push back by spending money where I think money should be spent to help people I want to push back with free speech and if I ever start to lose my free speech watch out so I don't ever want to advocate violence there's been enough of that some people will they'll advocate that I don't think that's okay I don't think that's ever going to be okay but uh I'll be honest with you I'm concerned I'm kind of scared I'm worried I'm thinking about the future I'm thinking about where I'm going from here I'm thinking about where I'm going with my new girlfriend. I don't know. It just seems like there's something big there. She told me that I should start doing these. And uh, she kind of believes in me. Not just kind of. She really does. And she doesn't know me all that well. But it's like, I feel like I've known her all my life. Like we were destined to be together. And I know I'm, I'm schizophrenic. So, like, you might not take me seriously when I say that I was meant to be with someone, but, like, she sees it, too. And, uh, we're going to work to be together, be there for each other, do the right thing, make a difference, and make a change. So, don't overreact to people. Don't take things too far if you're planning on making a difference make a positive difference in a good way boycotting something's okay voting's very important marching's okay just be careful make sure you know what you're doing 
do plenty of research on how to do it safely. Uh, I probably won't be out there for very important reasons. I got some things to think about. I can't just hop in a car and go down to a march. Uh, I'd love to trust me. I'd love to be out there. But I might wind up causing more trouble than it's worth. I might wind up just creating problems, and I don't want that. I want the best for you. I want the best for this country. I want the best for my fellow human beings in the planet. And uh, I think maybe that's all I have to say so far. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another uh, sermon from Pretend Church. I'm your pastor, Stephen Jeffrey Cumberdale. And uh, love and light, hang in there. And uh, I do believe in God, even though I don't think anybody has a monopoly on what God's all about. So I'm going to give it a moment of silence. And God bless. Amen. You are dismissed.